This is Pam Coey, and I am going to be doing an encaustic demo right now. I love encaustic. I've been doing it since 2008, and I have it set up now so that I'm going to be showing you how I play. I play in encaustic the same way I play in all the other mediums. So that's the cool thing, I think, for what I've understood and kind of what I've realized as I've been painting for so long is that it really doesn't matter what medium you're painting in. You can have fun in the beginning, in the play stage, regardless of what your medium is. Play doesn't necessarily mean putting paint on a panel, though. If you happen to be more of a realistic artist, it could be, you know, you play with sketches or you play with a color palette or you play by taking photographs, um, walking in areas that maybe you've never been before to get ideas. So the idea of play for me uh, is related to process. Um, so for other artists, I think that it's important to figure out what's fun for you. I've heated up a lot of colors here. This is not a limited palette. And I'm actually getting ready for a live uh, presentation with Teachable next week. So if you want to join in, I'll be painting live with seven other artists that I've invited, and we're going to have a lot of fun. You can join me. Maybe you'll be at your kitchen table. Maybe you'll be at your studio, or maybe you just want to watch, but it's going to be a lot of fun. So I will have a link for you to uh, sign up and register because it is next week, February 24th, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's going to go probably like an hour and 15 minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna turn my camera down and I'll show you some encaustic. So I have got four panels here. Each one is six by six inches and this is Baltic birch. I have actually put tape around the edges and then you'll see that I've got this strap that kind of just secures them into place. And I'm gonna take some duct tape right here, flip it um, like this. And you can see how I've also um, left the plastic that comes on the panel when you buy it. So um, that just protects the back, you know, so that it doesn't um, get all full of wax and everything. I'm just going to put a little bit of tape on the back side to keep them a little bit more secure. The band is good. It kind of keeps things, you know, pretty contained. But um, just to keep these from moving around, this is one way to work on more panels at a time. And it's a great way to play, uh, just like if I'm working in cold wax and oil or acrylic on a four square, a sheet of arches oil or a sheet of watercolor paper. Um, I'm not going to worry about, you know, where one panel picks up and the other one ends. I'm going to kind of just pretend like there are no borders. So there's some blue paint that came off of this is parchment paper, by the way. Parchment paper is really great. I think it has like Teflon in it or something, and that just keeps... Um, your tabletop pretty nice and easy to clean. Nothing too worried about it. So um, I'm going to bring my palette over here. Okay, hopefully that's a little bit better here. All right, so um, these panels right now are just uh, plain Baltic birch. That's just a little scrap from my parchment paper. But the first thing I'd like to do is just take a brush and I'm going to start out with encaustic medium. Uh, just because I'm doing a demo right now, uh, sometimes I'll start out with just plain beeswax, but because it's a demo and I want to work more quickly, I'm just going to coat these with encaustic medium. Encaustic medium is made with uh, either filtered or bleached beeswax, or you could use beeswax from a hive. It's up to you. If you use beeswax from a hive, it's going to be more colored, more of a warm color. It'll have a wonderful smell. And it might have some debris in it. So if you want to use just uh, beeswax from a hive, you can either filter it, you know, melt it first and then filter it or not. It's up to you. You don't have to. Some people like that really natural, deep golden color, and it certainly is going to smell wonderful. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm coating it with encaustic medium, really just one layer to start with and then I'm going to heat it in. So the definition of encaustic is burning in. It comes from the word encausticos, a Greek term. They used to use encaustic to seal ships a long time ago, and then later on um, encaustic was used to paint the Fayum mummy portraits, and from then 
it kind of fell out of uh, some popularity, but then Jasper Johns in the 1970s brought it back to um, the forefront of art. So this is my perfume. Okay, and normally, again, I'd probably put a couple layers of encaustic medium on here, but because it's a demo, um, I'm, you know, I might put like three. Uh, the first two being in beeswax, and then the third one being encaustic medium. But again, for the sake of time, um, I'm going to just do it this way. And now I'm kind of letting it cool down. So obviously, I had to be a little bit careful with this webbing. <laughs> um, I probably could, you know, uh, there's probably something else I could use to secure this, but. As long as I push the webbing down toward the bottom and I'm careful when I use my propane torch, uh, I should be fine. And then also I could be using a heat gun, but my preference is always to use propane. I just like it because maybe it's some, um, I feel like it just doesn't blow the wax around. Okay, so, and then you don't have to have the webbing. You could just, you know, tape the back and, and be fine with that. You can see that um, some of the wax is falling down the crevice. That's fine because this is the play stage and anything goes and so at some point I'm going to cut all these apart and then work on them independently. So at this point, you know, the surface is warm and this is a great time just to play. Um, but I was thinking that I actually would coat these guys with um, a layer of white um, just because you'll see the colors better. So I've got white paint over here and I'm going to go over this um, initial layer of encaustic medium. I've got a bigger brush, so it, it does a really good job of covering. Um, it's just a six by six inch panel, so you know, it does a good job of covering. But brushes come in all different widths, of course, but, uh, and these are Hake brushes, H-A-K-E, one of my favorites. Um, however, I didn't even know about Hake brushes when I first started painting an encaustic. I just had those cheap um, chip brushes from the hardware store and those I still use them and that's what you know this is a chip brush this is a very inexpensive one I got at the hardware store so I, I tend to have those um, I may keep this brush reserved for working with white that way I don't have to clean it <laughs> kind of um, and then I have another brush that I'm kind of dedicating to encaustic medium so that I don't have to keep cleaning that and then I've got a dedicated brush for all these colors as you can see because the, one of the cool things about encaustic is that you don't really have to clean up. In fact, when you are done at the end of the day, you turn the heat off and you can let these brushes um, sit in these paint pots. And, you know, what's not to love about that? <laughs> There's really no cleanup. I think that might be one reason why I love it. Okay, so now I've um, done another layer of encaustic, so I have to burn it in. You have to burn in every single layer. So you can see that even with a propane torch versus a heat gun that it's kind of like uh, depending on how much heat I give it and that was definitely more than it needed just so that you know but um, one of the reasons I sometimes will do that uh, especially in these earlier layers is because I don't like these little pinholes that I get and uh, again under these circumstances where I'm trying to do things quickly um, it's pushing the wax around more than I would normally do it. But again, just for the sake of um, demonstration, it's fine, you can do that. And now the webbing is kind of sticking to my table. Um, now I do have a surface here. This is my um, high density molded um, polyethylene. So HDPE, uh, you can go to a plastic manufacturer and ask them to cut one to your table size because see, this is really easy for me to get it off um, at the end of the day. Uh, however, these tops are not cheap, so, you know, parchment paper on top of a, a six-foot uh, gymnasium table, that's going to work great as well. So um, at this point, you know, I just kind of decide what I want to do, and these are uh, cooling down right now, and 
this is would be a great time like you know if you wanted to really texture this but um, this particular set of four paintings and this particular demo is not going to be really about all the ways you can texture and caustic as much as I love that that'll be another video this one is about you know play of course but it's it's about color and the interaction of color and so I have one little pan here and this is the one where if I want to thin something out you know you can take any color like yellow and it's very intense you know I can put a little bit of yellow on here and you'll see how intense that is right that's very intense but I can also take it and put a little bit here and thin it out so I can add some encaustic medium here like this maybe a little bit more and it becomes you know much thinner and it's a glaze so I take a clean brush I don't know if that's super clean but clean enough um, now let's test that out and see what we have okay see that's a lot lighter and nicer so I thought I would kind of just focus on some stripes and play with um, you know some some thicker paint some thinner paint and just kind of have fun I'm not going to worry about anything. I've got so many wonderful luscious colors here. So I've got yellow and I might kind of just start to play with, um, let's see, add a tiny bit of orange here. I'm looking for kind of subtle shifts in color because that's really fun. I, I love to just see how I can um, change the character of a paint with, you know, by, look, I've just changed this quite a bit here. Now it's going to be quite thin. And I'm not going to really overlap that yellow because, again, I'm trying to keep this at one layer. Now that might be, that's pretty washed out, that's okay, but, you know, that's going to make this orange look even cooler, right? There's orange, a pop of orange. Now it doesn't always have to be that width, but for now um, I'm kind of keeping my stripes sort of similar in width for now. So let me just try some, um, let's see, I've got some intense blue here. That's going to be, so obviously not a limited palette again. All right, so I'm still playing. And I've got, so if I stay with the warms over in this little paint pot here, I could add, let's see here. I added some orange, but how about this? It's like a quinacridone magenta, I believe. Turn the heat up a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to, without dripping into my encaustic medium, I'm always moving these little things around because it's like, what do you want to stay the cleanest? And actually, this is burnt scarlet. Here's my quinacridone. Let's see what we have now. As long as I'm adding, you know, basically staying with the warms, then it won't get too murky. It's not that I mind it being murky, but um, so there's another really pretty color. And if you overlap a little, I mean, that's okay, too. To keep things simple, my brush marks are pretty much kind of the same width. Normally, that um, I would vary that more. But again, in a demo situation, I, you know, my biggest problem here is I didn't want to blow a fuse. <laughs> so normally, I would have like another container, a large container of encaustic medium and um, I would have, um, I'd be able to clean my brushes a lot more, but I, I really have to be careful how many implements I have plugged in. If I'm not careful, I will blow a few. So now I'm going to take some blue and now I'm adding cool to warm. So I'm expecting it to go kind of, it's not going to be the prettiest color in the world, but I'm expecting that and that's okay. So the thing about color is as long as you're prepared for that, you won't be disappointed. When you mix a warm and a cool, you're going to get, you know, you're, you're neutralizing it and you're going to get kind of a more, more of a gray. But grays are nice too. See, that, that can be pretty. Especially, you know, when you've got these really gorgeous bright colors, um, a gray is pretty welcome. And now that's just one gray. I can, um, now that I've added the cool, um, I can add some of the burnt scarlet, which is a warm color and just kind of um, drip maybe it's dark too so it doesn't take a whole lot to change that color and again this is still relatively transparent I would say compared to some of these more opaque colors um, and you know where it drips like this um, yes you want to fuse every layer but you know a little drip like that doesn't necessarily count as like I'm overlapping things too much 
Okay, so that's, again, I'm going for subtle shifts in color. I like that. And you know, not everything has to be the same. Now, I only have blue here, so this being a series, I want to um, add some of the same color here. And maybe how about here? I kind of like the drips too. And already, like, they're happy. Like, these feel really happy to me. <laughs> I hope they feel happy to you too. Okay, what else? What haven't I, like, put in there yet? Because I have so many colors here. My green is taking a little bit longer to melt. And uh, that's very typical of a griddle like this. Um, it's, it's certainly not even temperature. Um, it's going to be melt. It's, it's got different temperatures across the entire surface, so that's just just be aware of that. Okay, now um, if I want to, I've only got this one little mixing area, and uh, so I think what I'll do is we dump a little. I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to let, let's do this. I'm going to fuse it. And basically, when you fuse it, what you're looking for is uh, the surface to get a little bit kind of uh, glossy. You don't have to like. You know, if you if you focus your heat, whether it's a heat gun or a torch, I mean, on any one area of your painting, it's definitely going to go molten on you, and you're going to see a lava flow, uh, and that's fine if that's what you like, you know. But just expect that. Uh, I do have actually this is a glaze. This is my alizarin orange. Uh, let's see here, make sure. Yeah, alizarin. Actually, this is alizarin crimson. It's a glaze. So you'll see now. This has been really thinned out, and I can overlap. See how thin that is and beautiful. That is, um, you can go over any color and start to create the sense of depth uh, over the blue, um, over the gray. Doesn't matter. Okay, so that, again, that's another thing that unifies the surface. I'm going to fuse again. <laughs> Then I'm going to go back to my encaustic medium. I need to turn my temperature up a little bit here. So I have to keep an eye on everything. Let me check. Got my infrared thermometer. So I use that and I point it at the liquid. Check the temperature. Ah, it's right on, like 185. That's about perfect. So 